Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about three different types of test. So the first one is called training and test data. The second one is called leave one out cross validation. The third one is called k-fold cross validation. So the idea for these three things were discussed in another video. So I'm going to link the video in the description box. So first of all, let us get access to a data set. So if you haven't installed a package called ISLR2, make sure you install that package like you just type that line run that line and then after it is it is done you load that package using the library function so run that line because we are going to use a data set called auto and this data set is in that package that we just loaded and the first, th first thing we are going to do is to create our training and test data set. So I use this data set because if you look into this data set, you can see this data is about gas mileage, horsepower, and other information. So my first question to answer is that how can we build a model to estimate the miles per gallon, the MPG as the response variable? So what we can do now is to create a training and test data so that you can fit your model on the training data and you can check the model performance on the test data. So first of all, I define n is the length of the data. So the length of the auto data, I'm going to use MPG so that you can see you have 392 total records. And then I define my Z using a sample function from n and I pick half of it. So Z is actually a list of numbers from 0 to 392 and I pick the numbers randomly. So the idea here is that I want to create my training and test data randomly. So now we have number z a list of number z as you can see the values can be if you print it out run z itself you can see we picked a list of numbers from 0 to 392 those numbers are very random and each number can only be picked once and now you know how to do the training and the test data so i can define train or training is the auto data but with the z rows we selected so this is the training data set and you can see we have the same number of variables but we have half of the observations and the testing data you can define it using anything that is not z so all the records that are not the z records that you have selected so that training and testing data all together will be the full auto data set that you have so this is the idea of splitting the data into half and half you can also s split the data into like 80 percent and 20 percent or 60% and 40%. So you can only you only need to change that half into whatever percentage you want for the training data. So now we can use a simple example by building our model one. Let's use a linear model 
named as model one, and we use MPG as the response, and we are using weight, horsepower, and acceleration. So those are the three variables we are considering. Of course, it's a random consideration. You should be more careful when you really build a model. But this is just an example. So I'm going to specify the data for my model as the training. So model one is the model like this. We build our equations and we specify the data is the training data set only. And then you can, so this is the build the model part. And then of course you can use that model to make predictions. So you can make prediction and then I put it on the testing data set. So I will not run this line now, but I'm going to name it prediction on test. Prediction P R E D dot test. So that all my predicted MPG will be saved under this name. So that if you want to know the mean squared error of the test data, you can definitely do that by using the y hat minus the y and mean squared error. So you need to square it and you take the average of all the squared values. So that's your prediction error on the test data using this model one there. Um, I forgot to mention that when you run the sample function, your sample function may pick a list of numbers that are not the same as mine. So if you want to get the same values as mine, you may set that seed. So this will fix the randomness in the sample function. So let's run this again, set seed, Z, and you get the list of Z values. Yours will be the same as mine. And then you get your training, your test, you build your model on the training, you make the prediction, and then you get the mean squared error on the test data. So you can see this value now is 16.63. So that's the idea of using, of splitting the data into training and test so that you can use a part of it for building the model and another part of it for making predictions for checking the performance. So the second part is to use the idea of leave one out. And to use that, we need to install a new package called boot. So you install that package and then you load that package because we are going to use a function from that package. And for both leave one out and key fold, the function, the major function we are going to use is called cv.glm. cv is actually the cross validation. So let's start with our model first. I'm going to copy that model one here, but I'm going to make a little change. I'm going to call it glm.m1 because cv.glm only works on glm function. So I'm going to use glm function, but every, everything else with the, will be the same, except I will use the full auto data. So you can see glm, the same equation here, and the data is the full original data that we had. Run that line. So that's your GLM model one. And this is 
the same, exactly the same as the multiple linear regression. But it doesn't matter that you use the GLM because you didn't specify a parameter named as family. So you didn't specify this, you are not building a logistic regression or any other generalized linear model. So then we can use the cross-validation for this model. So cross-validation is on cv.glm and we put the data set name first and then we put the model name as the second parameter. So this is how we do the model on the full data set, but we are doing leave one out, which means we build one model use ex excluding one record each time. And by the end of the day, we are building as many records as we have number of models. So you can call this the cross-validation error. And you can write. Then you can actually check. So because you have run that line and you can see it worked well. So what you can do now is to run the names function on the CV dot ERR, that thing we just defined, because you don't want to see everything of that under that name. You run that line, and you can see we have four things printed out. The first one we are interested in is the key, like how many folds you are using. If you are not specifying that key, it will be the number of records you have. So let's see our, yeah, the number of records in our data. And then the third parameter that there. So it is the cross validation estimate of prediction error. If you run CV dot error on Delta, you're going to see the errors one is raw error, one is adjusted error. So if you want to know the details, you can search on that. But Delta is telling us the cross-validation prediction error. And that's the idea. So that you know, if you want to do a k-fold cross-validation, you only need to change one thing. So now we can work on the k-fold cross-validation. The idea is exactly the same. So if you want to do k 10 fold you can use the same function cv.glm, put the dataset name, and then put the model name, and then you specify capital K equals 10. So you run that line, and you can double check this thing, the key value is 10. And then you can also check the delta, which is the prediction error is 18.46680. And the original error we had was this number. Probably you will get different numbers as mine when you do k-fold because the data was again randomly split into 10 folds. So if you want to have the same result as mine, you can set seed to be 1 or if you use I use 10, you should use 10. Then set seed number 1, cross validation, the k will be 10 and the delta will change a little bit, but we are getting the same values. So I believe for now you get the idea, how do we split the data into training and test data? How should we use training? And then how should we check the model performance on the test? And then how would you do leave one out cross validation? 
how would you do keyfold cross validation? Please leave me a comment if you have questions about this. Thank you.